Hi guys and welcome to Log Cabin Gaming. Today we've got a special tutorial for you. The Mega Boss Gordrak on his Moor Crusher Big Teeth. This tutorial will be split over three videos, uh, each detailing how I painted the Mega Boss, the Moor Crusher and the base separately. You can find the link for the other two videos in the description below. In order to make sure you don't miss any other videos we post, please subscribe and enable notifications to get notified whenever we upload a new video. Now that that's out of the way, let's get cracking. So with your more Crusher primed, the first thing we're gonna do is do a base coat of Zandri dust. And we're gonna do this all over the top of the model. So all the scaly bits, the top of the head. Um, it, so it's basically everything but the wings and the underbelly. Uh, you'll get an idea when you see the model, but yeah, Zandri dust all over this guy now. Now the Zandri dust is dry, what we're going to do is we're going to take our Raycar flesh and we're going to paint all the wing section with Raycar flesh and all the soft uh, kind of underbelly skin. Uh, where we get to the Zandri dust, we're just going to stipple it along and that's going to give us a nice transition. So we weren't too kind of careful with that because we want uh, an irregular natural pattern uh, to do the uh, transition with so using a large base brush I'm going to paint Raycar flesh all over the wings I've uh, thinned uh, this paint down nicely so it's just flowing in all the nooks and crannies to give us a nice even coverage you may need to give it a second coat if it um, dries a bit too thin but uh, yeah just remember to paint the underbelly and kind of stipple it around where it hits the legs with the Raycar flesh dry, you can kind of see now that we've got our two-tone colours. Uh, what I'm going to do, and what you could probably do now, is just go around and clean some stuff up that you might have missed. So I've missed the Zandri dust here, and also um, you can even stipple a bit more on just to work on... And maybe do a few more scales that you may have missed before. Kind of just adds a bit of texture around these scaly parts here on the edges. Yeah, all right, so we've kind of cleaned it up uh, however we want it to look. And now we're ready to start dry brushing. So we're going to start dry brushing... Um, scaly areas here around there um, so we're gonna gradually go from the Zandri dust all the way up to Rhinox hide so I've got three paints for that put them in order so towards the bottom here we're gonna start off with steel legion drab we're just gonna dry brush that around in a irregular pattern um, because it's a, he's a natural creature after all. Then after that, uh, we're going to dry brush it again in Katachan flesh. So leaving some of the Steel Legion drab behind. And then towards the um, kind of these horns, these spiky areas, we're going to end up in Rhinox hide. Okay, so get my Steel Legion drab, put a bit on the palette. So I put a bit on the tissue paper and wipe it off. Then I'm just going to lightly dry brush it. You can't see it quite yet because it's very faint, but we're just going to keep adding the layers until it gets darker. I'm going to carry on doing this. And then we'll be back. Okay, it's very subtle, but the Steel Legion drab is now applied. So I've just applied it in very random kind of effects uh, and areas all over the, the skin. 
Um, but basically that's going to serve as our transition from the Zandri dust all the way up into the Rhinox hide. So you probably can't even see much now. But it'll start coming together now because the next thing we're going to do is we are going to um, do the same thing but with Katachan flesh. So we're going to leave the Steel Legion drab behind and just work our way. Wherever we've dry brushed the Steel Legion drab, we're going to uh, add Katachan flesh, um, working that in. The same thing as before, we'll just get our paint. I haven't cleaned my brush, still, so it's still got a bit of Steel Legion drab behind, which is fine. And we are just going to dry brush. Following the same pattern that we had before, just working it in closer to the spines now. So I've left some um, Steel Legion Drab and Zandri dust behind and that's going to serve as our transition. Okay, so we've applied the Katachan Flesh and you can see it's starting to make a, a bit of a transition in from the Zandri dust. So now we are going to do the same thing, uh, but with Rhinox Hide. So we're just going to take some Rhinox Hide uh, and then we're going to dry brush it all over the model just towards the highest bits, the darkest bits where all the spines are and around this natural um, kind of pattern that we've created. You lose yourself in the latest and best blockbusters on Now TV. Hunt down vengeful enemies with Gemini Man. Confront your darkest... With the pattern starting to come, um, you can kind of go backwards and forwards uh, as you wish with those three colours uh, until you're kind of happy with, with how it's looking. Um, so next thing I'm going to do, because we're going to apply a wash over it, I'm going to do, I'm going to pick out all the straps in Morfang Brown and uh, all the teeth and bones and any spiky bits uh, in a Shapti bone because uh, they can all get washed in the same wash as well. I'm just going to pick out all these straps. And more fan ground. And all the teeth and spiky bits. We're just going to pick out in the Shapti bone. I'm going to do all that and then we'll come back when it's done. So we finished the Ushapti bone and the Mornfang brown. So we picked out all the spiky bits that we can see on the model. Uh, in Ushapti bone, all the these bone plates, spines, teeth, uh, claws, what have you. And then all the leather straps we picked out in Mornfang brown. Um, this is also a good time um, now that we've kind of seen the colouring of the bone is if you wanted to lighten up or darken up any of the flesh tone, you know, blend it in a bit more. This is the best time to do it before we apply the wash. Um, so I've, got, I've just lightened uh, a bit of the, the skin here just by going over it again in Raycarth flesh and then stippling some Zandri dust over it so it goes into the, uh, the darker tones. But now the next thing we want to do is we want to apply a wash of Serapim Sepia all over the model. All I'm going to do is just give it an all over wash over all the flesh, over all the skin membrane, over all the bone, um, just in Serapim Sepia. Yeah, a large shade brush will help you do this quicker. Um, you want to purposely do it. If it, if it kind of gets uh, too thick, you just get your brush and just move it all over the model to get an all over coverage. Okay, so I'm going to do this over the model and then we're going to leave it at least an hour to dry uh, and then we'll come back to it. Now that the Seraphim sepia wash is dry, I'm going to give just the, uh, the top layer, the top body, uh, a wash in Agrax Earthshade. And I'm going to use a medium shade brush this time because I want to just be able to, I want to push the Agrax Earthshade as well into 
the bottom of her, all the all the teeth and all the spikes as well. So we're just gonna do all the scaly bits now in Agrax Earthshade. And I'm just working it into the bottom of all the spiky bits. So there's gonna be a color transition uh, as it goes up to the Seraphim Sepia. Right, with the Agrax Earth shade now dry, we're going to go back to our pot of Zandri dust and we are just going to give it everything a light dry brush of Zandri dust, um, especially the lighter bits in the middle, middle of his skin. So what I mean by that is here. So we're going to lighten all that up here by going back to Zandri dust. Can even get the um the leather strappings with that as well. So I'm gonna do this all over the model. Well, no, sorry, I'm gonna do this all over the top of the body, okay? And over the wings and underbelly, uh, we're gonna do that with Raycarth flesh because that was our original colour. So I'm gonna continue to do that. Zandri dust over the top. Raycarth flesh over the bottom and underbelly, and then we will be back. Raycarth flesh on the wing membranes. Using a small dry brush now. And then I'm going to do all the underbelly as well. Okay, now that the Raycarth flesh has been applied, you see it's lightened the whole of the wings. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to apply a light dry brush of Flayed One flesh um, over the bone areas and the scales where I want it to appear lighter. Um, and then what I'll probably do, I'm just going to play around with the, with the scales till I'm happy. Kind of, I want it to go darker into light just to create this uneven pattern so I'll probably muck about with a bit of null oil as well if I don't think the um the gradient is good enough but um that's something that you can it's it's not essential which is something you can do if you want but yeah I'm just gonna put a bit of flayed one flesh over the, the bone areas and then them very lightly over here just to get a colour gradient going. I'm just applying a bit of null oil here to um, darken up the dark bits so there's more of a stark appearance between the dark and the light. So you've got a nice contrast between uh, the very darks and the very lights. Whilst the null oil is drying, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some Abaddon Black and I'm going to paint all the bits that I want to be metallic black, uh, just so we get a nicer metal colour. Um, so that's going to be all these armour plates here. I think he's got a nose ring and a few like <laughs> earrings. But yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to paint these black um, before we go to the metal side of things. Okay, with the black dry, I'm gonna get some Balthazar gold. You could probably do this with lead belcher, which I'll end up doing anyway, but I'm just gonna do a first dry brush. Balthazar gold. Just gonna do this for the armor plates, not the face piercings. Right, that's the initial dry brush of the Balthazar Gold. It just gives it a nice aged look. So I've just done all the armour metal bits on that, um, but not his face piercings. So now I'm going to get lead belcher. I'm just going to do a dry brush again, mainly on the outsides, kind of leaving the brass towards the middle. And then I'm going to get a paintbrush 
and paint his piercings on the face because we don't want to dry brush that. It's going to um, get onto the skin if we do that. So, so with my dry brush, just going to do that lightly dry brush, but try and get it on the edges and kind of leave the central bits brassy kind of gives it a natural edge highlight as well I'm going to carry on doing this and like I said I'm going to just pick out the facial bits uh, with a paintbrush rather than dry brush it Okay, so that's with the lead belcher done. I've also gone through and just picked out all the studs on his um, leather wrappings. You don't have to, but as I had lead belcher on my paintbrush, I thought I would. Right, next thing we're going to do, we're going to take null oil. Shake. And we're just going to give it a wash over all the metal parts that we've done. the null oil is drying I'm just going to take a bit of Mephiston red put that on the palette I'm just going to dot his eyes whilst it's wet I don't know if this is going to work but I'm going to get a bit of while dry the red, do the same thing, dot his eyes again. And hopefully it will bleed into the Mephiston red to give us a, a gradient. There. So you can kind of see it's a bit of a reflection already. Or a highlight as it were. Final piece, I'm going to do another dot, or oh, a flash gets yellow. And this is going to be the tiniest dot possible just for the pupil. You can't see but I'm using my little finger to stabilise the brush. using my little finger on the uh, table. All right, that looks good enough for me. Okay, now that his eyes are done, the final bit is just grab a bit of iron breaker we've got here on your dry brush and we are just going to lightly dry brush the edges of all the metal armor just to give it a kind of a sharp highlighted look I would call this part there's more crusher done now and all that's left to do now is to mount Gordrak onto big teeth and make sure he's securely fastened to the base and add your smattering of usual basing materials and there you go you have a mighty fine mega boss ready to stomp his way into some good scraps I hope you enjoyed this video if it was any use to you, feel free to like and subscribe as that helps us get noticed. 
If you've got any questions, please feel free to pop them in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them. Feel free to post your pictures on the Log Cabin Gaming Group on Facebook. Until the next time we meet, see you guys later.